Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Today I want to do a video on how I got enough gold to get my epic mount as I've had quite a few questions about it. What I did for my gold are some methods that will be a lot easier for people playing certain classes, mainly warlock mages or hunters, but some of the methods shown here are quite accessible for many classes. An epic mount will set you back 900 gold. Seems like a pretty massive number, but doing a little bit at a time, as well as using the methods and habits I talked about in my video for getting a level 40 mount, will certainly help a great deal. I had around 500 to 600 gold by the time I was 60. I can't remember the exact amount, but I ended up barely having to farm at all to get to 900. I was quite lucky though, to be fair. When it comes to farming gold, I believe you can separate it out into two different methods. Either consistent gold makers where you can have a reasonable idea of how much you can earn per hour and that gives you a set idea of how long you'll need to farm. And then the RNG gold makers, methods where you go after one big drop often worth hundreds of gold. Now there's always the chance to get epic items when farming anything and they're like a big bonus to what you're doing but you should never really count on getting epics as they can vary so much in price and their drop rates are so incredibly low. If you actually tried to farm an epic, you could go weeks without seeing one easily. Personally, I prefer gold farming where I chase after one big drop. For me, it keeps things a bit more interesting knowing that if I am lucky, I'm going to make a huge amount of money. Whereas the consistent gold makers are a bit more boring to me. I'm not too much of a fan of them and I tend to avoid them. But I'll be including both in this video so you can see some different methods at work. Let's start off with the random drop things. There are two main ones I like to do. First of all, the Eye of Shadow from Dark Whisper Gorge in Southern Winterspring. This is used to make the priest epic weapon benediction. It goes for about 200 to 250 gold on my server at the moment. Going as a solo player, this is really the only spot in the game you can farm them as well. They're dropped from the Hedering Slayers, which look like Felguards, and have about a 1% drop chance, and the Initiates that are Succubus, and they have a slightly lower drop chance at about 0.85%. The area is also full of Mana Stalkers, which don't drop the Eye of Shadow. However, they can take up some of the spawn points of mobs that do drop them. Saying that, there appears to be certain spawn locations specifically for the Felguards and Succubus from what I can tell, so if you're patient, you shouldn't need to kill any of the Mana Stalkers. I'd recommend going into this area a bit and not farming right at the entrance, as it can be quite busy there. The first thing to know about farming here is to never let anything get into melee range, ever. The Felguards have Mortal Strike, Cleave and of course their auto attack and they can do pretty much all of those in one hit and one shot you. The Mana Stalkers have a flurry attack where they can hit four times in a row. If you get crit you're gonna die and with the Succubus you want to play around their spell cast which I'll talk more about in a moment. Specialization wise, it doesn't really matter what you are, Grim Reach helps quite a bit on giving extra range on your fear and affliction spells though. Ideally, you want to be taking down the Slayers since they have the highest drop rate. Now, there's a safe and slow way and a fast and dangerous way. The safe way is to use Curse of Doom and then rank 2 banish that lasts 30 seconds, then a rank 1 banish that lasts 20 seconds, and then wait out the final 10 seconds for the Curse of Doom to tick, and then repeat the process. This is pretty slow though. The fast way is to spam fear and hope they don't run into other mobs. I've always gone for the fast way. As long as you hit the fell guards every so often, they will follow you pretty much forever. I've got an example here where I basically do everything wrong to make this difficult for myself. All you need to do is stay cool and hope they don't resist your spells. By the way, I use a fell hunter as a pet. Pets here are just for DPS. They're not going to be tanking anything for more than a few seconds. Spell looks like a ranged taunt if you haven't hit a mob yet and uh, I use it here to get this fell hunter off me before I banish it. Also, I'm on a PvP server and you mostly run into other casters here so it can help you win fights. I did farm here just after level cap as well. In this clip I've got quite a bit of gear and I had to wait around two Curse of Doom rotations per Felguard kill, so around two minutes per kill. Be careful if Doom actually kills the Felguard as it can summon a Doom Guard on top of you and they hit pretty hard as well. But the fell guards, mages and hunters can kite them out and kill them pretty easily as well. I think warlocks have the easiest time though. Secondly, and a lot easier than the slayers, are the succubus. And for these you need to play around line of sight to take them down. And despite there being pillars and pointy objects everywhere, they're what I like to call pretend line of sight. Spells go straight through them. Go figure. The only real line of sight are in the caves, so you want to pull each succubus back over to the caves and dodge in and out between spell casts. Don't forget to pop Shadow Ward if you are going to get hit by a Shadow Bolt. They hit pretty hard. Also, they try and spam Mind Control if you have a pet on them for some reason. Demons are immune to it though. Once again, go figure. I guess it will be the same with Hunter pets, so that's a free cast if they do. Most classes in the game will actually be able to farm these, even some melee. They do hit quite hard with melee all the same. 
and watch out if you're farming these as a group because the mind control will mess you up. The final point to keep in mind while you're farming here is that Eye of Shadows are unique. So when you get one, you need to go sell it, you need to go trade it off to an alt. I actually had two Eyes of Shadow dropping three kills because I didn't realize this. And luckily I found someone nearby so I could trade it to and then loot the other one. And then on my way back, he got a dropper as well. And uh, I made it back to him with about two minutes left before his one despawned. It was a pretty awesome moment for us both. The second RNG farming spot I like is Maz Thoril, which also just happens to be in Winter Spring. This is for the mature blue dragon sinew used as part of the quest for the best hunter quiver in the game. On my server these go for around 300 to 400 gold. There are 0.5% drop chance for the cobalt wormkins scalebane or mage weavers. You can also get a tailoring pattern from the robe of winter knight from the mage weavers at around a 2% drop chance and this one's a bind on pickup and it's very powerful for a number of classes, specifically Warlock, Shadow Priest, and Frost Mages. So you can double dip here as a tailor, which is pretty cool. The Mage Weavers also dropped the schematic for Arcanite Dragon Link and the recipe for Greater Arcane Protection Potion, which are both around 10 to 20 gold a pop. In terms of taking these guys down, they may be a bit lower level than the last mobs we are looking at, but they hit very hard. And this goes for the Wormkins and Scalebane. Once again, there's a safe and there's a speedy way. The safe is to Curse of Doom, transfer life on your Voidwalker until there's about 30 seconds left on the Doom, and then just go full out damage. Doom does 3,200 damage baseline, so you just need to time it when the mobs are about that much health. And I just tend to sacrifice my Voidwalker on most kills. It goes through most of its mana bar holding aggro and resummon it for the next. This works well inside the cave where space is limited. If you're outside, you can just spam fear and pretty simple. As for the Mage, Weavers, they cast Frostbolt, play around line of sight, exact same as the Succubus, very easy to take down. There are two things to keep in mind here. The Whelps are all in packs of three, and they hit pretty hard, so careful around them. Secondly, you frequently get groups of Horde going through here as part of their Anixia attunement quest. So if you're Alliance and on a PvP server like me, you better watch yourself in here. Okay, so those two spots can be some good gold, if you are lucky. I happen to be lucky, it worked in my favour. You can't be lucky unless you try it after all. But what about slightly more consistent place? First one I want to highlight, I mentioned it in my last video actually, I'm going to just quickly go over it again, uh, it's Frost Small Echo. Once again it's in Winter Spring, Winter Spring's very good for gold apparently. And these are about 15% drop chance from Frost Small Giants, just north of Dark Whisper Gorge. Ensure you're carrying the cash of Maori so you actually have a chance to get items they drop. These go for about 1 gold 20 silver on my server, and they can also drop the recipe for Greater Frost Resistance Potion, which is currently going for between 30 to 40 gold. I just want to do a quick note on the elementals in northwestern Silithus as well. They are very popular. They drop Essence of Air and Earth at around 7% and 4% drop chance respectively. These both go for over 10 gold on my server. This place tends to be pretty busy though because it's such good gold per hour. And finally I want to cover an area which is very consistent for Warlocks and one you should absolutely know about I think. It's a very popular farming spot and that is Soloing Marauden which is around 50 gold per hour or so depending on your experience and how efficiently you're able to get through the place. So first of all you need the Scepter of Celebrus. Fortunately for you guys I just happened to have done a video on all the achievements so if you don't have it you can go check that out on how to get it. I'll link it below. Secondly get the Minor Speed Enchant on your boot. It only costs a few gold and it makes an enormous difference especially on Theradras. Don't go farming here without this enchant believe me. Thirdly bring a good supply of Soul Shard. Sounds obvious right but I'm talking like 20 plus if you're going for a decent session here. Especially if you're learning, you're going to make mistakes. They're also quite difficult to get back whilst you're inside the instance. So Marauden is so popular due to the bosses being quite easy to solo and they have drops which have a good vendor value and I'll link the possible items you can get on each boss we go over. So from the entrance we're going to go down to purple side, hop off the ledge, turn around, use your scepter and we'll be at Earthsong Falls. You don't need a pet out at this point and by the way quick side note never dismiss your pet, put it on stay and once you've run far enough away from it your shard will be refunded. This doesn't happen if you dismiss it. We're going to head straight past the dino boys up the corridor here, stick right on the walls and be quite careful on the last pack here. If the dino on the left is level 48 he can aggro if he's facing you as you run past so wait for him to turn around and then we're going to run past him nice and easy. From here we're going to use Eye of Killrog and we're going to send it down the path to Tinker at Gizlock. The aggro radius on Eye of Killrog is pretty terrible. Either it pulls stuff from when you seem to be miles away or you literally have to jump up and down on top of something before it notices you so keep your distance you know still be careful on your way down. 
Once you're there, jump up and down on Tinker a bit until he kills your eye, and then we're going to run straight over to Theradress now. Once again, it's pretty straightforward to run. Just want to mention to be careful with this last pack of giants. You can jump into the waterfall and swim up it a little bit. We're going to summon our Voidwalker and wait for Mr. Gizlock to arrive to the party. You may actually be able to kill Theradress while you wait for him to get here, but probably reach the instance cap. So we're going to fast forward a bit until he's here. So this is a very straightforward fight, gonna keep at range, pop doom on him, let your Voidwalker do the work and keep aggro. Once he's getting a bit lower, you can sacrifice your Voidwalker and just go full DPS on him. Do remember to keep your distance, his auto attack shoot hits about 450. He also throws bombs that do minor damage and you can run away if you get far enough away from them from when the cast time starts. Finally, he does a frontal AoE, which you should never be near him for. And if you aren't a lock, you can go down to where I just pulled him from earlier and do this there as well. This is just a time saver that warlocks can do with I have Killrog. Also, if you're farming this as a hunter or a druid, it does have an ability that fears beasts for 10 seconds, so keep that one in mind. And Gizlock can drop the following items. So once he's done with, we're already at Princess. Get your Voidwalker back out and get to full health and mana. This fight is where those boot enchants will really start paying off. And I just want to do a quick note, there are two small pools around the entrance area which will cause you to swim slower than running. So just check where they are before you do your first pull and make sure you understand how to path around them. Your Voidwalker isn't here for threat or tanking, it's just giving Princess something to hit. She has four abilities you need to know about. Boulder is a ranged short duration stun. You can outrange it if you run far enough away, but you do need to be absolutely miles away. Dustfield will be cast when there's a target in melee range. This is an AoE around her and is really good for us. She's immobile while she's doing this, so it allows us to gain some distance. She has a fear, but it won't do anything since we're far enough away. Finally, her most dangerous ability by Bar is Thrash, which is basically Wind Fury effect on her next attack, and she will always do this when she reaches you. So we're going to pull her with a Shadow Bolt, Immolate, then start dotting her up. Use Doom for your curse and start kiting her around the edge. Your Void Walker hitting her should cause her to use Dust Field about twice throughout the fight before it kills it. Once again, it is quite simple, just keep running. You can sacrifice your Void Walker if she looks like she's going to melee you just to be extra safe. Make sure you've got Hellstone handy as well. You'll likely need two Doom rotations to kill at her lower gear levels and once she's below 20% she starts moving slower and you can outrun her just with the minor speed buff you've got on. As with all the bosses make sure you drain soul to get your shard back since we're spending a void walker on each of these. She drops the following items and a quick side note that once you get a bit used to this you can start selling runs as Blackstone Ring is pre-raid best in slot for many auto attacking classes. You can slash join world to advertise there whilst you're inside the instance as well so it's pretty cool. It usually goes for about 20 to 25 gold and can add a nice bit to your gold per hour. Finally, we're moving on over to Rock Grip. Now, this guy is much harder to manage than what we've done so far. He only has one drop that's good as well, so you could always just skip him, but I quite like the challenge. So we're gonna head back on up the path and drop down to the ledge here, just to the right. And we're gonna be waiting on this bridge for Rock Grip to path around, just to the left-hand side of the bridge that I'm currently standing on. So we're going to want a Void Walker again for this fight. We're going to hit him with a Shadow Bolt into Immolate and Doom to start. I do have extra range on my abilities, so I'm hitting 36 yards away. I'm not really sure how much of a difference this makes. I believe you can still hit him 30 yards away from this point. Once he's up, kite back and dot him and have your Void Walker hit him a little bit too. Reapply Doom before jumping down. Have your Void Walker follow him a bit just so he gets to the start of the tunnel and then put the Void Walker on stay. If it follows him all the way down, it'll pull mobs. So we're going going to swim around to the side. I believe if you go to the far right, the boss shouldn't pull the Hydra just in front of the tunnel. If the boss does end up pulling the Hydra, you can just fear it. Uh, make sure you're in range to sacrifice your Void Walker from upstairs. You don't need line of sight to do this. Reapply your dots and nuke the boss when he comes down. He hits very hard, so you need to end the fight quickly. If you've also aggroed the Hydra on the way down, just keep it feared. Get your Void Walker back out and kill it. Once again, don't let it hit you. It has a Wind Fury attack. Everything here seems to have a Wind Fury attack and it hits pretty hard and from here on out what you need to do to reset the instance is have someone invite you to a group log in an alt and invite them to a group then make your alt the leader reset instance and then you can log back in on your main and be at the start of the instance and ready to go again and once you've done this leader will swap once you've been logged out for a few minutes so you need to invite an alt to do this once per session this trick really makes farming here work this is just a feature of classic i guess we'll call it clever use of game mechanics shall we 
And there we have it. That's what I wanted to share today. This is more of a warlock oriented vid for sure. I'll probably do ones like this occasionally, but not really too often. I like doing videos many people can benefit from after all. And you can certainly apply some of the methods here to other classes though, mainly hunters. Pet classes are just good at doing stuff solo, I guess. Let me know what you think and if you want to see more stuff like this. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care.